Alright guys, today we're going to read the story The Meadowlands. Um, it is about a page and three quarters and we have four story questions based on the text. So before you begin, make sure you put your name somewhere on this so that way if you forget to return it back in your folder we know who it belongs to. Okay, so here we go. The Meadowlands. Sarah's dad told her to stay away from the swamps at the end of her street. These swamps in Sarah's neighborhood are part of the Meadowlands. Sarah's teacher explained that the Meadowlands are wetlands. Wetlands are places in nature. They hold so much water that the ground there is almost always wet. Swamps are a type of wetland. Swamps have mostly trees and shrubs. Part of the meadowlands are swamps. Sarah's teacher says that birds flying from Florida stop and rest in the meadowlands. The meadowlands once had a lot of garbage in them. They made the water in the wetlands very dirty, said Sarah's teacher but most of the garbage has been taken away. So habitat for wild birds is recovering or becoming a healthy place again. It's becoming a better place for birds to rest. In the winter, the Meadowlands looked just like her dad said. They were filled with dead plants and trash. But in the spring, the plants turned green and flowers began to grow. Sarah had heard different things about the Meadowlands. Her dad had even told her to stay away from these wetlands. So she wasn't sure what they were really like. She was left wondering if they were actually beautiful wetlands with birds and flowers. But maybe they're actually filled with ugly swamps, she thought. Sarah wanted to find out what this place was really like. She took her dad's old boat by their house. She also took a paddle and an old life jacket. She threw them into the boat. She dragged the boat all the way to the swamp at the end of her street. As she stood by the edge of the swamp, Sarah began to realize these wetlands were big. They stretched to the north and the south. She could not see where they ended. Sarah was a little scared, but she didn't want to drag the boat back home. She put on her life jacket. She then pushed the boat into the water and jumped in. She found herself in a pond with water. The water was not deep. The area around the pond was muddy. She saw ducks and flowers. The splashes of Sarah's paddle scared a bluebird. It jumped into the air and flew away. This is all so beautiful, Sarah thought. The boat slowed down. Sarah looked down. She saw the boat was hitting the muddy bottom of the pond. Brown mud moved around in the water every time she moved her paddle. This movement made little bubbles of gas come up to the surface of the water. They popped and released a very bad smell. Sarah almost threw up from the smell. Soon, Sarah's boat got stuck in the mud. She tried paddling backward to get the boat out of the mud. That just made the smell worse as more bubbles popped out of the water. She started to cry. Just then, something heavy and dark moved loudly through the plants in front of the boat. A hand pulled the par plants apart. A head popped through. It was Sarah's dad. Sarah, what are you doing out here? He called. Sarah tried to explain, but all she could do was cry. Well, it's a good thing you dragged the boat. The boat made a long trail in the ground, her dad said. That's how I tracked you here. Take this rope. He threw her a rope. Sarah grabbed it. 
her dad pulled the boat to land. Sarah worried that her father would be angry. Instead, he laughed. I did the same silly thing when I was your age, he said. Did I ever show you the place where otters live? Sarah wiped tears from her cheek. She shook her head no. Well, let's go. I'll show you, her dad said. The swamps can be pretty gross, but there's some beautiful stuff in here, too. You just have to know where to look. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our story questions. There are four of them. All right, so the adults in Sarah's life seem to be confused about what? What were the adults confused about? Okay, we'll go back and we'll find the answers to these questions in just a moment. Sarah takes her dad's canoe to explore the Meadowlands. What motivates Sarah's actions? So in other words, why does she want to take the boat into the Meadowlands? Number three, there are different contrasting opinions about the Meadowlands. What evidence from the story best supports this statement? So in other words, there are different opinions. So contrasting means they're different, okay? So um, people have different opinions of the med, med, ah, Meadowlands. Which evidence is going to best support that people think that the Meadowlands are a beautiful place to be and other people think it's a gross place to be? And then question number four is our last one. Based on the story, what can you conclude about the Meadowlands. So what conclusion do you come to about the Meadowlands? All right, so let's go back to question number one. We have the adults in Sarah's life seemed confused about what? What were they confused about? Well, let's go back to the story and let's take a look at the very first little paragraph again. Well, as I read, I'm skimming and I'm trying to see what different people are saying. So her teacher says that they're wetlands, so her teacher is kind of staying to a scientific facts, right? They're wetlands, swamps are a type of wetland, they're called wetlands because the ground there is almost always wet. That's why it would be called a wetland. Um, let's see, the birds like to fly there and stop. They had lots had they had garbage once in them, which made the dirty, but most of the garbage is away now. Um, her dad, so her teacher says that they're wet. They have, it's becoming a healthy place again, but it was dirty at one point. Now her dad says that in the winter, they or that when they used to be, yeah, in the winter they were filled with dead plants and trash. In the spring they're green, flowers are growing. Um, so what do you think that the adults think? So what are they confused about? Are they confused about New York City? No, that's just silly, right? They don't talk about New York City at all. They do talk about garbage in the wetlands, but I don't think they mean a garbage dump itself. So I don't think it's that. Are people com confused about the birds and the wildlife that lives in there? Hmm. No, I don't remember reading that. The big thing is they're confused about the wetlands. So some of them think it's a dirty, gross place with lots of trash, while others think it's a green, beautiful place to go. Okay, so question number two. Sarah takes dad's canoe to explore the Meadowlands. What motivates her to do that? So what motivates Sarah's actions? So why does she jump into there? Is it because she wants to know if the wetlands, the Meadowlands are an ugly swamp or a beautiful oasis? She wants to prove that her dad is wrong and there's the Meadowlands are dangerous. Does she want to study them for the, a class project? Or does she want to show her dad that she is brave and adventurous by exploring on her own. Well, I know it's not this. She doesn't need to prove anything to her dad. She didn't say anything about a research project for studying. So now I'm down to A or D. So take a second, think about it. Which one would you choose? Pause this video. All right, welcome back. Which one did you choose? Well, if you chose A, 
You are correct. She wanted to know if the Meadowlands are an ugly swamp or a beautiful oasis. So if I go back to, oops, excuse me, sorry about that. If I go back to the story, I can even see it right here. She wanted to find out what this area was really like. So she wants to know if it is beautiful or if it's ugly. Okay, there are different contrasting opinions about the Meadowlands. What evidence from the story best supports this statement? So how do we know that there are different opinions about the Meadowlands? Is it because Sarah doesn't know what the Meadowlands are really like, so she decides to go and see for herself? Is it that the Meadowlands used to be polluted by garbage dumps, but now the Meadowlands are recovering? Some say that the Meadowlands are a dangerous swamp. Others say they're a precious habitat for birds. Sarah's father warns her not to go to the Meadowlands, but Sarah ignores his warning and visits him anyway. So remember, we're looking for different opinions about the Meadowlands. So take a second and read through those again and figure out which one's the best choice. So this one's tricky. Remember, we're looking for different opinions about the Meadowlands. So there was evidence in the story that supports that. So it is not A because this is her action. It doesn't talk about what the opinions are. Okay. It could be B. We have two different opinions. It used to be polluted by garbage dumps, but then again, maybe that doesn't quite work because it's still one opinion. So they used to be polluted by garbage dumps. Now they're recovering. Yeah, maybe not, but let's look at the other choices first. Some say that the Meadowlands are a dangerous swamp. Ooh, so some people say this, right? That's one opinion. And what's the other opinion? The other opinion is they're a precious habitat for birds. That would be opinion number two, right? So that's our two totally different ideas. I like this one the best. So the answer is C. We have two contrasting opinions there. And that works well. All right, and then our final question. Based on the story, what can you conclude about the Meadowlands? So what do you think the Meadowlands are? Are they dangerous and should be left alone? Can they be both beautiful and disgusting? Are they always a beautiful flowering oasis? Or are they still too polluted for animals to live there? Okay, take a second, pause this video, and just make your choice. All right, if you are back, then you have made a decision. So it's not A, because remember her dad is in the in the wetlands right now. He takes her out. He takes his daughter out there. So no. Ooh, they can be both beautiful and disgusting. That could be. That could be. I'm going to put a little exclamation mark behind that. It doesn't say that they're always beautiful. That word right there, always, that makes it a no because they're not always beautiful. Sometimes they're a beautiful flowering oasis, but not all the time. And then right down here, this last one, they're still too polluted for animals to live there. Well, what about the otters at the end of the story? right? So they live there. So that means it's not that, which means the answer was B. All right. So make sure your name is on this and that you turn this packet in on Monday. All right. Watch the next video for proper nouns.